I think the jobs that we do and the things that we do don't have to define us as people. You know, I think one of the first things that people ask each other is, so what do you do? Um, you know, I have many hobbies and I have many things and luckily enough, I'm lucky enough to be a person who gets to do the things that they love. Um, I don't know what the top would be. What is What would be the top thing that you do the most or the thing that you love the most? I don't know. Ah, exactly. So then how daunting was it to get involved in this? Because this is takes a real sense of discipline, not yeah, that yeah. you're not disciplined in all other aspects of no, your no, life, sure. but this <clears throat> is a real... Um, actually, funnily enough, less daunting than anything else I've kind of ventured on, just because as a kid... I, I grew up writing a lot, um, but I never really believed in myself as a writer because my grades weren't very good in terms of like English. And, you know, when you're when you're graded on the fact if you can memorize a book and kind of copy it off again, um, you know, that to me was how good I was at the thing that I loved. Um, and it wasn't until after school that I really flourished in terms of my writing because I just was able to creatively do it without having to be judged on it. Um, so when I got given the opportunity to kind of get these ideas that I had from school and, and from other times of my life and was able to create them with Rowan, who is an incredible author, it was an amazing thing to to get that freedom, um, especially to bring these characters to life. That was the first kind of start at the beginning, you know, creating, you know, Red, Leo, um, Naomi and Rose, you Ash, know, that yeah. really falling in love with them. Did Red come first? Red did come first, yes. And what did you want to get across? What was the essence of Red that you wanted the readers to take from this book? Well, it, again, it was to to live in the point of view of someone who, you know, is writing a diary and is a teenager and is is lost um, and is in that time of their life when life when they don't know who they are. Um, they express themselves in a certain way and are being put under lots of different pressures by friends and by teachers and by by family members, but still who have a very close group of friends who kind of get them through it. But again, it's not all easy. Red does mess up and make mistakes, but again, you get to see kind of Red transition through that and also redeem, redeem themselves. Why do you think it's still so hard for a young person to be able to be true to who they are, especially with their sexuality in this world? Because I think it's constantly changing. Um, for someone who's a teenager, I mean, I think now even as an adult, um, you know, every day I feel slightly different. Um, I change my mind a lot, you know. And as a teenager, you're kind of, you have to decide what subjects you're doing. You have to know what you want to do for the rest of your life and you kind of get given this deadline of who you are and you know as a teenager I think it's it's a very fluid thing and you it's a it's a period of self-discovery um and I think teenagers need to be given more space to allow that to happen instead of kind of having to be something something at some point to someone okay so red's red's red okay so red has challenges yes about who red is yes okay <laughs> Uh, we're trying not to give anything away here. Yeah. We're trying not to give anything away. Um, and those challenges are common challenges that a lot of teenagers still have in this world mm -hmm. because of the prejudice mm -hmm. that they face. You're lucky to work in an industry, especially in modelling, where I guess there is little of that prejudice. Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, modelling... I mean, again, prejudice, I don't think, happens more or less in... I mean, of course, it does happen more or less in certain places and cultures and different things, but, you know, there are always people who are going to have or hold some sort of stigma or put um, stereotypes on certain people. Um, you know, that... Again, I don't know if modelling is... Oh, I don't know. I actually don't know. You know really? It does still happen. Yeah, for sure. Because the perception would be that the industry that you're in, especially acting and then that is, is open-minded. I could open -minded. name people who would shock you in the fact that they have still and hold stigma towards people of, of a different sexuality. How do you react to that when that's presented to you? Um, well, again, it's like how I react to the rest of the world holding those things. It's, um, it's something, unfortunately, that we have to accept. Uh, not that it shouldn't change, um, but it's just the way it is, unfortunately. You know, I think change is coming about and it's happening at a very slow pace. And it doesn't just happen with um, sexuality. It's the same thing with with race and culture and everything else. You know, there 
are, are, are still people that ha hold a very fixed view on things, you know. Um, but I think it's important to to always be open to people's um, opinions, you know, and to always want to change that. In that respect, then, do you find yourself, and through writing this, as having to be a role model or wanting to be a role model? When does it feel like a burden? When does it feel like this is who I need to be? I mean, it's never a burden as long as people um, remember the fact that I am a human being. You know, I do also make mistakes and I am not perfect and I'm not trying to be perceived or, or let anyone else think that I am anything other than human. Um, you know, and that that is the point, uh, is to also be... But that's what I want, and, and I want people to look up to me in that sense that, you know, I am someone who didn't believe in themselves and didn't have any dreams or goals or didn't think I was going anywhere. Um, but that there is always hope and there is always a chance that if you do kind of get through that tough time and period and if you do believe in yourself and if you do reach out to people and find that strength, whether it's in yourself or something greater, that, that your dreams can come true. Um, and I just hope that, you know, kids that are, you know, mental health, I think, is a very, very important thing. And I think as long as, you know, people who are considering ending their lives or, or you know, sabotaging themselves in any way can just somehow hold on um, and kind of keep that hope alive, really. Um, the new survey's come out that's just said that two-thirds of girls in the UK do not have high body esteem. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that affects their whole life. Mm -hmm. It affects... Uh, their social circles, it affects how they're willing to express themselves because they feel that their bodies, through Instagram and through social media, how is this shaped? I think it's even shocking that it's two-thirds. You think it would be higher? I think it would be everyone. I mean, I don't know anyone who, whether they're man or woman, doesn't necessarily have some sort of second thought about what they look like, whether it's their body or their hair or something. Um, you know, I think... I, I don't actually know if I have met anyone who's literally like, I, you know, there's people that I think do accept, you know, there's days that you go through where you're like, you know, I feel good, even though I know I have this wrong or whatever, you know, I still love myself and I accept that. But, you know, there's always going to be days where you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, you don't like the person you see and maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I know very much with the people people around me and people who you even think and would look at and go, wow, they're the most gorgeous person in the world still will have something, have some sort of hang up, some sort of body dysmorphia in some way. I guess, though, that the circles that you move in are fairly rarefied. They're not the experiences that most people have. So there is a, a backup to that. Not that success brings happiness and certainly not that money brings happiness. Mm -hmm. But for the girls, for the 40 million odd who follow you on Instagram, do you feel that the pictures you post should instill confidence rather than make young girls feel more insecure about themselves? Oh, my God, yes. Um, you know, France just passed a law that if you Photoshop someone's body in a picture that they have to write it down in a magazine. I think that's really beautiful. Um, you know, very much me being a model, you know, it was always that thing of I I would always pull funny faces and you know, I don't mind if I have a double chin or, you know, post pictures on Instagram where it is funny. I like to make people laugh. Um, you know, of course, everyone you know, will take that selfie where they look really good. And, you know, that's nice as well to feel good in yourself. But it is also important to know that, like, you know, it's okay to not look great all the time. You know, I wake up in the morning and I look like crap. You know, sometimes, of course, like, I'm human. Everyone does. Um, but, of course, I also like to put on makeup and look good. It's, you know, it's, it's having both sides of that. It's very much part of your job to look like that. How responsible do you think, especially the fashion industry, has been? I mean, you've just recently mentioned this French law that has come in mm -hmm. but the fact that a law had to come in mm. perhaps tells people all they need to know about profit over people's well-being especially young girls I have an eight-year-old daughter mm -hmm. I don't want her to grow up thinking totally. that that being super slim or the or looks are more important than yes. what's inside yeah so yeah. how do you think Cause that's what real beauty is to me I mean you can meet the most beautiful person in the world put that in in quotes but that that you know, looks wise may be beautiful, but then really inside they, you know, not are dead, but have, <clears throat> you know, that that's all they believe in and that's all that they value is looks. And that to me is ugly. Has the industry done <clears throat> enough? 
um, to to redeem themselves. Yeah, in many ways, because as I said, if a law has had to come in place, that shows that. But again, fashion is about the outside. It's about clothes. It's about something that we all wear on the outside. It isn't about what's meant to be underneath. You know, that is what art is about, and creation, and other things. And um, uh, but I think it is important to remember that that is the industry that is making money you know that is again you have to look at it that hopefully the young girls that's not all they're interested in and they 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 do want to find happiness in something more than just what they look like and that's i guess good for you to write and to act for sure to show that it isn't just about the superficiality of here's my face and this is all i'm going to give to that's the when i really found true happiness when i was able to start creating things and i was able to just stop you know Again, I pushed myself to a limit because I was just, you know, living in a place that was in my head. But then all I was worrying about again was like working, but also, you know, what I look like. And that to me was just there was just I, again, I felt I dead inside a little bit. So you yourself fell into that trap. Yeah, for sure. Um, but again, I was also in a place in my life where all I was doing things was for other people. You know, I just wanted to make everyone else love me or make everyone else happy. I forgot what I really wanted in life. You know, the reason why I was doing what I was doing. Um, are you at peace with those particular demons that we all have, to be fair? No, we all have. And again, it's not like I feel like I've overcome everything and I'm now perfect. <laughs> zen like. And peace and zen like. Yeah. Of course not. I still have ups and downs all the time, but... It's about finding balance um, and about putting yourself first. Like I love working so much, but sometimes I use it too much as an escape and I forget to check in with myself and I'm like, wait a minute, am I happy? You know, you forget sometimes. Um, but as well, yeah, that that's for me what writing is and and again, being able to, to create and reflect on all those things, that helps me so much. Then what about acting? What does that bring you? Acting... It, it's a very cathartic thing because um, actually as a person growing up, I'm, I'm really bad at expressing my emotions and acting really taught me how to do that, you know, because for me, acting is, is very real. I have to believe in something and act because it, it's less about playing a part. I'm really about finding that connection and real emotion in the part that I'm playing. Um, so actually it taught me a lot more about myself than I thought, even though I'm playing other people. So you would have gone through, this is really interesting because you said you've just started off as being quite a closed child in many ways mm -hmm. of growing up. Then you go into an industry where there are sharks swirling around lots of young women all the time. Yeah, yeah. And then you come out of that and become more open. Do you feel now that you're at the most open in your life or you still have to be guarded because of the well, I was celebrity like, status? This is the had? point is actually when I was growing up, I was totally closed within myself, but open to other people. And now I've become more open in myself, but closed to other people. Do you know what I mean? Because before I trusted everyone, um, I'm not business minded at all. You know, I'm someone that... I see the good in everyone. So I would just trust everybody and people around me. And I didn't think that, why would anyone use you? Or why would anyone walk all over you or, you know, want to screw you over? That to me was crazy. Um, but now, you know, I kind of... How many times did you learn that lesson? Uh, or was it just once and then you went, right, okay, I'm not, I, I need to be harder. You know, but whether it's, whether it's with, you know, um, whether it's in the relationships that you have or whether they're business or not, you know, it's... We all deal with that growing up. We all get screwed over enough to realise, wait, I'm not going to make that mistake twice. You know, people, you know about relationships that you go back to someone who hurts you all the time because you're like, surely, surely there's something there. Surely, but it's your ego that gets hurt that you want to redeem yourself in some way. I don't know how many times, but enough to know that I will probably happen again, but also hopefully not in the same way. Does that mean you're a hopeless romantic? Is yeah, Red totally. a hopeless romantic? <laughs> totally, but I, I believe... And I will always believe, no matter how many times I'm shown the opposite, that, that love will always prevail in some way. Um, you know, and I think more than ever right now, we need to remember that there is always hope, even then when it gets really, really bad. Hopefully that it is that that dichotomy and that ball will come and swing completely the other way. It will, you know, brings us together more than anything. Because now we're in a place where we're all fighting for the same thing, I hope. Not everyone, but <laughs> the majority. Yeah. Um, Red's in quite a dysfunctional family setting. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it to express that, to try and create that? I mean, 
anyone who I've ever met has some sort of dysfunctionality in the way they've grown up. You that know, maybe the industry. <laughs> no, I don't think. Look, I'm not only friends with people who are in the industry. Definitely, definitely not. No, that would not be good for your sanity. Okay. No, no, hell no. Um, but you know, and whether people are perceived to have a perfect um, childhood, that doesn't exist. It just doesn't. Um, whether it's in their family or in, in someone or someone they knew who grew up, there's always some sort of degree of separation to some sort of madness. Um, so it wasn't hard to express. You know, I definitely have grown up around some sort of madness. But I, that's also something that, you know, I think the things that the imperfections and the um, the flaws in people are what makes us beautiful as human beings. 